10 foods that you want to have in your diet as a woman in perimenopause. Do you wonder, okay, what should I eat in this stage of your life? I'm going to share that with you. I am Robin Nutritionist, and I help women over 40 thrive in their body using food and nutrition. And I also help you reduce and mitigate symptoms and concerns related to the pause, perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. Okay, so let's just jump right into these foods. Take a note and make sure that you are including these foods in your diet. There are workarounds or other foods, but the more of these foods or food types that you have in your diet, the better. When I tell you I would not be the person that I am and feel as I do, I'm not perfect. I still have symptoms of perimenopause, mild, but things would be different if I did not flood my body with these fruits. So let's just get into them. No particular order. I have a list. I may work over to the side. But one of my favorite things, foods to tell you put in, into your diet are flax seeds. They are a phytoestrogen. So they help to balance out the estrogen. Your estrogen is too high. If your estrogen was too low. Now, again, some of the foods that I'm going to mention for your individual biochemistry, you might be allergic to some of these foods, but just in general, right? Because I don't know you yet. So with flaxseed, you want to make sure that they are ground and refrigerated. So keep them in your refrigerator. And when you are having one to two tablespoons a day, it's really good. So it's the phytoestrogens, helps with the estrogen. It also helps with the bowel movement. So first one is flaxseed. I get mine from Trader Joe's. I put my flaxseed daily into my smoothies. And you can put them on salads or meals or sprinkle them in other things. But flaxseed is a must-have for us in the pause. All right. The second one, again, no particular orders. If you're like me, you get excited about this one, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is full of antioxidants that we need and magnesium. Really good for us. But the question you might have is how much, right? How much? So I take a, I have a, I buy a big block and I take a square. So like one ounce a day. Uh, someone asked me about the saturated fat. If you're having a one ounce of dark chocolate, 70% cocoa, cacao or higher, you're good. If you take it, it, it gives you what you need. You can stop cravings and it, it works. So dark chocolate every day. 70% or higher is really good for us. And it has a calming factor. Our emotions and hormones are just all over the place. And a piece of dark chocolate, which I'm about to have when I get off here, it's just like calming. All right. Number three, avocado. Avocado is fiber rich. It is a good fat. It's so good in salads, smoothies, makes things very creamy. So it helps our bowels. All these foods work together for the good. And if you look at the list, you can say, shoot, I can make a big old salad with this and, and live my best life. So avocados. Next are cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables. So your Brussels sprouts, spender cauliflower are examples of cruciferous vegetables. Another one of those that helps to balance the estrogen. So if our estrogen is too high, down, it's too low, it can bring it up. Next, I think it's number five, would be your leafy greens. So your chard, arugula spinach, another one of those estrogen balancing foods, fiber. I mean, leafy greens are like the superfood for us in the pause phase. Again, take all this, make a big old salad, keep it in your fridge, eat every day this, and let me know how it goes. Let me know. I always want to know. All right. Number six, I think, omegas. So that could be your fatty fish. It could also be your walnuts, sardines. Fatty fish helps us with our brain. It helps our cells. So we need that fat, that oil to help our cells do what they need to do. Number seven, berries. Berries are good for fiber, 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 antioxidants, cell protection. All of this and it's working together so that our bodies and what it's doing at this stage is helping to mitigate some of these things. Do it. Do this. I don't know what number I'm on. I'm always off on my numbers and I'm looking at my notes. Organic soy. 
a lot of the soy that is presented to us, actually 90% of the soy is GMO. It's used for preservatives, but there's 10% of the soy that's available that is organic, non-GMO, and it is good for us as women and known to help reduce hot flashes. So when it comes to soy, I drink a soy-based protein. And it is, and I'll put them so you know what it is. It is non-GMO and it's called water wash with the highest quality soy. And it just works to get, works in tangent and helps us with the, some of those pesky symptoms like hot flashes. Yes. And then number, I think it's like your protein. So chicken, fish, turkey, eggs, tofu. Oh, let me go back to the, the soy. It's organic. Tof, tofu, edamame, those are some soy options for you. But none of those processed soy meat substitutes, like that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about organic soy. So like, like I said, soybeans, edamame. Protein is super, super beneficial for our muscles, for our blood sugar. And every time you eat a carbohydrate, you want to marry the two. I've done so many videos about this so you can find it somewhere on this channel. You want to always have protein with your meals. It buffers the effects of, of sugar. It helps us with our weight, our muscle mass. It is like a superfood for us in the pause. I'm going to say Greek yogurt. That's a probiotic rich food. Maybe you don't have dairy. So you do sauerkraut, miso, tempeh. Those are fermented foods, kombucha, kefir, fermented foods that also work with our gut health and help with the good bacteria because in our gut there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria but oftentimes the bad bacteria is running the show so we want to put that good bacteria in to be the powerhouse so that our gut and our brain and all the things work together so greek yogurt works for some it doesn't i stopped doing that or any dairy but i've added yogurt back into my life because it's high in protein it's calcium rich but that's not what i use it for i just like it because it acts like a creamy decadent dessert if i'm being honest i get it plain but i put honey and berries in it and i just feel like i just had a dessert and again it has more it probably it doesn't bother me it doesn't make my digestive system it, it helps so that's why i use food and use kombucha or miso or sauerkraut, but probiotic rich foods, number 10. So go back. If you didn't hear everything that I said, take a note of that. And just when you're making your grocery list, put these in your basket or on the list and consistently put these in your mouth and let me know how it works, how you feel. Now, you may need more support, and I would love to support you in a more extensive way. I have a membership, which we do a lot in there. And one of the things that I do is a personalized workshop with you so that we can look at your goals, what you're eating now, and tweak it so that it is good for your blood sugar balance, your cholesterol, your weight, and hormonal changes. As a woman over 40, we put it all together and it's, again, it's a workshop. So I need to know what you're currently doing, what your goals are and workshop it so that when you're done, you have a roadmap. However, when you're in that community, I make sure that I have a roadmap that you can always refer to and then we create yours, but you always have the proper tools and resources to achieve our goal. And this is evolutionary because what your body like last two today might now be different this week because of the hormone. So we get into all of that. I get excited about it. Take a look at what goes on in the community. And in addition to the nutrition support, I bring in the best experts to help us through this pause journey. And I am uh, your nutritionist for a year. So take a look at that uh, down below. And what else? I will put the information about the soy-based protein that I use. And I also use an omega that is a plant-based. I'm going to put that down. So plant-based omegas. I use it. So I eat salmon. I'm not uh, vegetarian or vegan. But I do use a plant-based omega because 
with the plant-based omegas, you skip all the toxins and mercury. And I'm just trying to lessen my load. And with the plant-based omegas, the omega comes from the algae. So the fish is out of the picture. So there's no mercury and any of that in there. And I just, you know, it's like pick your battles. I don't do fish oil. I do the plant-based omegas because it works wonders. And so I'll share with you that as well. This is Robin, Necessary Nutrition. Take care.